Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides again. Al Combs is wearing that snazzy yellow t-shirt. Um, well, this is my summer t-shirt, and um, I'm covering Guns N' Roses today, so it always reminds me of... Uh, because uh, the uh, because I have some eyes that um, of the bluest skies as if they thought of rain. So it's summary, I, I guess. Anyway, um, anyway, Guns N' Roses have got a song called The General, which I need to react to, and I'll tell you why after I've sung the theme tune. Can't say fair than that, can I, Governor? Justin Hawkins rides again, again. And the second from the last chord was a bit of a... It doesn't matter. When Guns N' Roses announced that they were releasing a seven-inch single for perhaps in August, fans were surprised to learn that its B-side was a new song titled The General. The song, which was written during the Chinese democracy sessions and has been the topic of discussion by fans online for nearly two decades, was finally unveiled on Thursday nights uh, at the band's show at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, um, introduced by Axl Rose as a song that it hadn't played before and that it could be very interesting. Um, we're going to watch some fan footage uh, of the song that night. Um, before we do that, though, I should mention that tickets for my live Justin Hawkins Rides Again for the first time UK tour are now on sale along with the VIP meet and greet tickets too. There's a link to that in the description, so get your tickets now. Craig F7313, not to be mistaken with the other Craig F uh, and the other 77,312 of them, says, yes, sounds f***ing amazing live. Axel's vocals, especially in the chorus, are so powerful. Clap, clap, clap. Kickstart My Heart said, such a heartbreaking song. I've listened to it thrice and teared up each time. Um, Josh said, don't cry tonight. <laughs> and then Ronald Live Reviewer said, I understand, it's horrible. So yeah, it's definitely divisive, and I always appreciate things that are divisive. I think that's what rock music should do, really. It should make some people hate it and some people love it, because what's the point in making stuff that's mediocre? There is no point. So let's watch Guns N' Roses. Okay. This is called The General. Sounds like it's in June. The interesting part being this, um, the introduction of the G sharp. Though my understanding of... Uh, Guns N' Roses is that since the beginning of time they've been detuning all of their guitars a semitone to make them sound more powerful. Um, so I would guess if that's de- that, that would make it a G sharp in terms of the voicing. Uh, but I think I'll just play it in G for now. It's going to make my life a lot easier. I think. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pause it here because it's quite a gentle sort of Axl Rose delivery, not the sort of thing that we're accustomed to, really. Um, and I, we're not hearing much in the way of sort of slashisms. I know there's two brilliant guitar players on stage right now, um, but it's very synth heavy and we haven't got to the chorus yet, so I can only imagine it's going to fucking take off. And whilst doing so, it will take my shirt and face off. <laughs> Here he comes. Okay, so now you can hear Axel opening his voice up a bit. (laughs) 
This really does sound like it's of that sort of Chinese democracy era. There's something in that style of writing. <laughs> Kind of a bit grungy, actually, when you think about it. Or maybe I'm thinking about some, something in the way. Ooh. Which reminds me, I should go back and re-watch that uh, Batman movie with uh, Zoe Kravitz and what's, what's his name? Robert Pattinson. Good movie. Great soundtrack. Sounds a bit like this. It's funny when um, when a singer is is kind of struggling a little bit. Maybe he's just fallen over. The thing I'm thinking of is the Then Jericho Trip Fest, which was a thing on YouTube that I used to watch endlessly. When he throws a tambourine up, does a little jump, gets it all wrong, falls over, then falls over again, lands on someone in the audience and says, "I'm sorry," in the middle of singing, and then goes, "I'm still here." Which is, it's just some of the best YouTubery there's ever been. <laughs> But what happens is he sort of, when he clambers to his feet, he sort of seeks solace by putting his arm around one of the guitar players. And I feel I feel like that's what, that's a good move for a singer who's struggling a bit because it sort of takes the, I don't know, it takes the attention away from the fact that they're, you know, perhaps not delivering in the way that they would love to you know i know how it feels to play a song that you know is not going to land like nobody if nobody's ever heard a song before and you're playing it at the fucking hollywood bowl for the first time that takes balls of steel like solid steel um i mean the darkness did that once at the headlining reading festival unveiling some new material which i hadn't even finished a fucking lyric for uh, that wasn't balls of steel that was just pure stupidity i don't think that's what's happening here this is this is the balls of steel side of it Lovely video wall stuff of a big crocodile or one of those sort of prehistoric versions of a crocodile. Crocodilosaurus. Yeah, that's what that's what it's called, I think. The funny thing about crocodile is if you watch an alligator, for example, in uh, in its natural habitat, it just seems to sit there. They're not fast animals. They're just sort of they're just chilling, and then suddenly they're not. And maybe that's and uh, I would hope that that's maybe an allegorical kind of video wall depiction of what this song does uh, dynamically. So I'm hoping at some point it takes off so, and then eats you. It's funny because it, it's such a human and vulnerable situation, this. I mean, he's not relying on any kind of real-time pitch correction. And when he's off mic slightly, is you're losing a bit of power. And, and I think singers do that when they're not confident about the material. But at the same time, he's running around a lot. And I think he's really trying to get this song to land and get people excited about it. Um, you know, at the expense of a, of a really, really solid vocal performance. But there's moments in there when you hear the proper shreddy kind of powerful Axel that we all love, you know. I mean, and we, we all love Axel when he's in form. And there's little glimpses of that in this. It's just that it's unfamiliar material and he's running around a lot to try and sell it, I think. Yeah. 
But it sounds, it has, I mean, the song itself and the composition, it has that sort of slightly bloated self-importance thing that, that I think Use Your Illusion has. And sometimes that's in a good way. And Chinese democracy has, you know, flashes of too. Um, but for me, like my favourite Guns N' Roses is the filthy stuff, the stuff that's very obviously punk inspired and... You know, I suppose I'm talking about the first record, really, which I I happen to think is the greatest debut rock album there's ever been, and I'd be surprised if it's ever surpassed, really. Um, but this is more the sort of luxurious, um, I suppose, self-important Guns and Roses stuff, um, which you know I quite like still. I actually, I quite li I quite like the pomposity of of that later period. <laughs> But all you really want to see is Slash with a fag in his mouth just kicking ass and doing a guitar solo with on the rhythm pickup for a JCM 800 or whatever it is he plays. And uh, I'm really hoping that's what happens. I mean, you can tell that this is kind of not landing in the way you'd like it to. LA, LA gigs can be difficult anyway. The LA, the Hollywood Bowl, I think, is a, is a particularly kind of uh, it's a, it's an atmosphere for an audience that is quite conducive to chit chat. They have these sort of garden sections at the bottom, uh, quite near the stage, where you've got your own little deck chair and you can just sit around and maybe you'll have a pims or something. It's more like going to a tennis match than a gig, really. So you can't really expect a, a ferocious and um, sweaty, reactionary, crowdy type thing in in this particular venue. Um, so they're playing to the audience to to a degree, really, and reading the room. But you can hear people sort of talking amongst themselves, which is slightly irritating. <laughs> but then again, that's that's the downside of fan footage, really. And there's really no sonic difference between Axel in 2023 and Axel in 1987. When it comes to that low stuff there, he's, he's still just kicking ass. He's exactly the same as it always used to be. You've got to remember, this is a guy of a hell of a range. He really is. He's, I've done, forgotten how many octaves it's supposed to be now, but it's impressive. I do think that this footage has been sort of let down a little bit by the limitations of whatever audio capturing uh, hardware is in the phone that the fan is recording this on, or it might even be an iPad, who knows, you know, you just never know nowadays. Um, but I'd like to think that being there in, in that moment, it would sound better than this, you know. I've seen Guns N' Roses more times than I can count, and I've played with them a few times as well. They, they sound better than this. Trust me. This is the problem. People shouldn't be allowed to film stuff like this. I shouldn't be reacting to it, really. I should be rising above it. But I'm not going to do that. Of course I'm not. I love Slash's guitar playing. I think it's one of the greatest of all time. Um, it feels like he might not be 100% familiar with the movements of this one. He's sort of bending up and sort of trying to bend his way out of trouble here. Uh, and the solo has only just started. But once he gets his bearings, you'll find that he's the Slash that we all know and love. And if we don't love Slash, then what the fuck are we doing listening to guitar music? This guy's a, this guy is a legend. Yeah, now he's got it. I mean, you've got to say that to 
to do an unfamiliar song like that in a situation, well, in, I suppose in Guns N' Roses, what, what, when are they going to do a, a private show <laughs> or, you know, like a secret show? Um, it's incredible to think that, like, uh, any band would road test new material at the Hollywood Bowl. It's fucking staggering, really. I mean, it's, it shows you how huge they are, really. Um, yeah, and perhaps it didn't land. I don't know, but uh, there's something about it that's definitely of that of that uh, Guns N' Roses era that I think, you know, perhaps doesn't resonate with me as much as uh, some others. It's it's definitely use your illusion Chinese democracy esque in in its pomposity. Um, but yeah, I'd have to see it. I'd have to listen to it in real life. What What do you think? That, that, I mean, divisive, certainly. There's moments in there where I just think he sounds great and it's you're waiting a long time for the guitars to really hit you. That might be a mixed thing and it might also be something to do with the way it was recorded. Um, illegally, I would say, is how it was recorded. Or immorally, at least. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again, don't forget that live Justin Hawkins rides again for the first time. Uh, my UK tour, there is tickets available and also VIP meet and greet packages and all that kind of thing. There's a link to that stuff in the description. Um, let's get this conversation started. What do you think of this Guns N' Roses uh, song, The General? What's the general consensus? Uh, see you later. Okay. 